All righty. <laughs> Here we are. It's Wednesday, and I don't know what I'm doing half the for the rest of the week. I have a full calendar. We're at the Clearpoint Crystal, Crystal Clearpoint Studio. I, where am I? <laughs> And this is, we're talking again, watch out. And we got Lou Ann Morris and Matt, Dr. Matthew Pierce. And I don't know who I am today, So, but I got on my hat. So tell them what we're talking about. Uh, Rise. Does, does familiarity <laughs> breed contempt? And specifically, all three of us have really nice gifts in my opinion, and I'm entitled to my opinion, regardless of what people say. And I have found it interesting all of my life that people that barely know me are drawn to me and ask my advice and ask for my opinion. And they take it to heart and they just think that I'm effing brilliant. And my people that know me the best are like, <laughs> you know, and they don't listen to my advice. Only to come back later, sometimes two months later, sometimes five years later and say, oh, you were right. Well, why didn't they just listen to me in the first place? And why is it that they don't give me the credibility that people that barely know me do? That's my question. Well, that's one of the reasons why you have a T-shirt that's coming that says, you know, fuck you, Deborah. Because, I mean, you know, it, yeah, I've, I've done that. I, you know, I've, I've listened and I'm like, yeah, yeah, okay, whatever, blah, 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 blah. And then it wasn't until we had, you know, a conversation that was just like, I've had it up to here that I went, oh, you said this. You're absolutely right. So, no, I, I get it. I totally get it. Um, I've had similar things happen to me, you know, the people that are, you know, familiar, you know, with who I am and what I do. Um they don't always accept what I'm, you know, what, what I'm putting out there, you know, um, and they kind of, you know, find out later that, well, maybe he does know what he's talking about. So what makes people do that though? I mean, I mean, they should know us better and know our qualities better and our abilities better than anybody. And they discount them the most. Do you have the same experience, Lillian? It's, well, it's not just the intangible things we do. It's also the tangible things we do, like my products. Yeah. No one in my family uses my product. Well, you know what else? Now that you said that, you know what else? I have, I think, 30 books on Amazon that I've written or co-edited or co-written that time. Do you know that I don't think anybody in my family has read one of them? Not one of them. Not even Chicken Soup for the Soul? No, no, I'm okay. not kidding. I know, right? Uh, okay, with that many books, I would have thought that someone in your family would have taken an interest in at least reading one of your books. Well, and, and on top of that, some of them are children's books, so they're written very easily to read. <laughs> now, the, my grandkids have read the children's books because oh. they were written for them. OK, and my son has not only read the book about his childhood, but he's taught from it. OK, mm -hmm. but just to sit down and say, what did Deborah write about? Maybe she wrote about me. Maybe I should read this. No. <laughs> and I can guarantee you none of them are listening to my podcast, which is why I just talk so freely. Screw them. I'm going to tell whatever I want to about you. Well, I know that there were a couple of people in my hometown that read my uh, well, I just did a chapter in a book and they read both of those chapters. I think that's because they were afraid they were in it, <laughs> but. I like fear. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, these are people I went to high school with and they read it. I bet you a nickel if I asked my kids, you know, did you read this book? Well, no. Well, see, that's what kills me. I used to take their little crayon drawings and put them on the refrigerator and buy nice frames and frame their little drawings and put them in the house. And they can't even take the time to read a three-page story in Chicken Soup for the Soul. Yes, I'm in Chicken Soup for the Soul. I'm hot shit. So, you know. <laughs> well, I mean, seriously, where's the love? There isn't any. Well, um, I mean, 
I, I think that sometimes our families have this idea about us and like they can't go beyond that. They can't see beyond that. I mean, uh, perfect example, um, you know, when I got my doctorate, you know, I kind of announced it to the world. I kind of, you know, came out of the closet, you know, <laughs> with my doctorate. Well, you do that a lot. Um, that and sounds to me like, like your, your superpower coming out of the closet. It's my superpower, just like coming out of the closet. Um, but I mean, I, you know, I got a better response from people that I barely know. Okay. When I announced it to my dad, you know, it was honestly his, his, his final, his, his final saying was this, well, you're always good at school. <laughs> and that means what whatever you know so yeah. i mean so no i i get it but i mean i think that when it's our family and our friends and and they kind of have the experience of us that sometimes it's difficult for them to see our accomplishments and you know what we have to offer because i i don't know if it, they maybe think that you know well sometimes i feel taken advantage of you know or, you know, that, that, well, I, I want to be utilized, you know, right, <laughs> I think right. I'm worth something, you know, I mean, Luann, when you said that, you know, your family doesn't use your products, I'm like, why not? And I've given, I've given it to them like at Christmas and stuff. So I want to do our user products. I customize the products for myself. I'm like, can you yeah. do this, do this and this and this to it? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm involved in her business. <laughs> but I, I have to back awesome. up what I said, though. I have to back up what I said. My daughter has read a lot of my books uh, because she used to, first of all, she used to help me at my council families center. So she was involved in a lot of things that we taught and things like that. And I also know that she listens to a lot of my podcasts because she will call me and we'll have discussions. So I have to back that up. My daughter is involved in what I'm doing. But, you know, I know my dad didn't. I know I know none of my cousins and people like that really do, or you know, and I, I just find that odd. And then, you know, I have good friends that I give advice to, and they they may even ask my opinion. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. And then they'll say, "Well, you're wrong." And then six weeks later, well, you know what? This person did this, this, this. And I'm like, I told you they were going to do that. Hello, I told you. You know, okay. so. I, I don't get it straight. I don't think that whether whether it's advice or whether it's product or whether it's you know even maybe maybe not the fact that hang on <laughs> I'm going to try to use Hello. words here words <laughs> because when I discovered that I can afford for Matthew to do some things for me, I'm like, yay, he can do it and he can do it quicker and better than I do. And I don't have the headache. So why doesn't that translate to those who need it? Those who are closest to you, those are, you know, just like giving your advice. Yeah. Well, or even using our gifts, you know, so it's like, I, it, I tell you right now, you know, we, we're sponsored by Miles of Smiles events. We're an entertainment company. Hopefully we entertain y'all occasionally. I don't give a shit if we do or not on the podcast, but hopefully we do. And, you know, and so we do it, uh, intuitive readings. We do interactive, intuitive entertainment, but we bring our gift to the table. We're not just making things up out of our ass. All right. Mm -hmm. And so we tell people, information on the level that we perceive that they're ready to hear or willing to hear. Okay. And I speak for the group because I have vetted this whole group and I know exactly what they do and how they do it with confidence. And if I had a dollar for everybody at a party that said that is spot on, I mean, that I, it's a repetitive phrase. I'm sick of hearing it, frankly, but I'm glad to hear it. Wow. Oh, that was so spot on. Or the other one is that was scary accurate. The word scary is what freaks me out. Why is that scary? That's scary accurate. I mean, I I, I would retire right now. I'd have enough money to yeah. retire. And, you know, the last time I read it intrinsic, it was the same thing. 
you, they get this funny look on their face when you start laying down the cards and saying what, and, and I said, is this not resonating with you? She goes, yes, it is. So yeah, I mean, sometimes are, you have to do the, the, are, the, we the, are we unhappy? What what's going on? She goes, you're you're absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> and, and one of our other readers is my husband Scott, and he, you know he had a, a a guy at his table last week. He and Luann were working for a client, and the guy sat down and he goes, "I can tell you're a skeptic, so just take what I say and do what you want to with it." And the guy became totally turned around. He goes, "I'm not a skeptic yeah. anymore," you know. And so how is it that we can be so powerfully impactful to people that don't know us? Complete strangers. Yeah. And then the ones that know us, that should know us the best, they're like, yeah, yeah. And it's the eye roll, you know, that comes from. <laughs> <laughs> or the, no, my, my, here's the word I hate, whatever. <laughs> I used that a couple times this week. Okay, whatever. <laughs> you used it a couple times with me, darling. <laughs> and, and I'm like, I'm whatever your ass. <laughs> and then one time I was working with the John telling him something and he goes, Mom, we don't need your help. <laughs> well, excuse me. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, I'm done. I can't learn not to say that to me because the when they said that to me and they call me the next time, I'm like, hey, you don't need my help. Why are you bothering me? <laughs> so they learn not to say that anymore. <laughs> I, I in business, I, I stopped those conversations really, really quick. I actually just had a, a, a conversation before we went on uh, went on the air here. Um, and this person wanted all of these changes, and they're like, oh. Well, I want to change my messaging. And I'm like, you do realize that we have a deadline of March 3rd. Okay. Your website is almost set. Your advertising for Facebook is almost set. The advertising for all your listings like has already been done. And I was like, and now you want to come back and change the entire message that you want to portray with this. And I was like, Okay, but it's going to cost you X amount of dollars. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And all of a sudden they were like, oh, I thought that was included. I'm like, no. no. Here's I was like, and that's why I included my contracts. Okay. Fuck there you. is a drop dead date for some things. Okay. You have to say, nope, I've signed off on it. You don't get any more changes. I was like, after the after March 3rd, I was like, then we can discuss. I was like, but I have to have something to put up there. He's like, okay, okay. I well, want to do that, I, with, I I do that with friends and family sometime too. Well, <laughs> I was going to say that my, my husband pointed out that I do a much better job vetting my clients than I do my friends and family. <laughs> so, you know, that might be why I have a better success. But I also educate my clients up front what they can expect and what I'm going to do for them and what I'm not going to do for them. And I do it with a smile on my face so that they are willing to accept that because the smile reassures them that all is well. <laughs> so, you know, presentation does help. Maybe, maybe I need to look at the way I present to my family. I don't know, but it's I, I think you should use those glasses when you present right? because <laughs> I think that would be amazing. Why? Why? It's just you 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 have that air of like okay. <laughs> it actually makes Doesn't you more comfortable, I think. Doesn't it remind you of Coco Chanel though? Yeah, it kind of does. Yeah. Did you know her personally? No, I did not. <laughs> you, said, you know what? You said that I had a t-shirt coming saying fuck you, Deborah. Mm -hmm. I want another one where it's got the picture of someone slamming their forehead with their palm going, I should have listened to Deborah. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, one I think is better. And then Matthew and I can wear our shirts that say, fuck you, Deborah. And you can wear the, I should have listened. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. And I, I think that's a much more depiction of what goes on in our world. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I mean, Eugene? So, um, so here's another question. Um, do you give 
unsolicited opinions and advice to your family. I used to, but I don't so much now. I think I still do. Not so much for my family. Um, definitely with my friends. I mean, I, 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 I almost at a fault. I, I'll say, you know, um, I have a tendency to just speak out because I know something, um, and I, I need to get better at saying, "Do Do you want to know this?" Like, <laughs> because I think that I I do get my feelings hurt when they're like, "Yeah, yeah, I'm not going to take that, I'm not going to do that." Well, that's why yeah. I ask people, "Do you want to vent or do you want?" support and help mm -hmm. <laughs> you know or you want I my opinion, great you question want my advice, you know I think that's a great question i'm going to start using that because so, frankly i'm tired of wasting my time mm -hmm. i do say have you tried mm. yeah that annoys then, me when she does that <laughs> <laughs> why does that annoy you i don't know but it just really gets under my skin <laughs> And I've been meaning to tell you that. Don't say that anymore. Say it. Somewhere. Actually, you can't. You can't do that. You can't do that. You can't <laughs> ask that question. She tells me what to say. She tells me what to. Say. Well, no, because if she's asking you a question, have you tried? I think that's a legitimate question. Because I, you don't like it, I think that you're more so challenged by the question. No, than the I'm, I'm question. fine with the information. I don't like that phrase. It insinuates in my subconscious somewhere see because i'm very enlightened about who i am that i'm too dumb to think about things no but no that's what it is for me so what i'd like to hear is like you probably have thought about this but this has worked for me have oh. and i might want to remind you about that okay. that is fine but have you tried i don't know it just feels sarcastic to me uh, well the reason i I guess I put it that way is because I figured you have tried it, but maybe you haven't. And here's what I did. So. Well, then, then if you really want to stroke my ego, you can go, I know you've probably thought of this, but let me remind you. <laughs> Look at Matthew. I'm a scientist. Well, bitch, I like to bitch, use please. brief and, and direct. I'm not. A writer. The first You're time very I eloquent. I don't know why you say that. I find you very eloquent. Sometimes you have to think about what you're saying, but we all do, you know. But I find you very eloquent, and I find you very Thank you. Uh, good at your word selection. I'm just telling you that as a person, for whatever reason, somewhere in my life, that phrase is just not a good phrase that I like, and I'm allowed to not not like it. And it I've been meaning to say something, and it, you. And, and I've just got to a place where I could say it right now. <laughs> so, so Luann, here, listen to this. Uh -oh. So, uh -oh. Deborah, have you considered that maybe this trigger that you uh, get triggered on when Luann asks you something is because you feel like you actually know what she's going to say? What? I don't even understand the question. What? She does that all the time, okay? She asks that question all the time, okay? And so, therefore, you already know that, that whatever is going to come after that, you've already tried, you've already done, and you don't want to listen to it. And that's your way of shutting her down. Because I've already tried it? No, not necessarily because you tried it. That You just don't like that phrase coming from Luann. Oh, I don't shut it down. I still listen to what she says. I, but I have I have to work harder to stay focused on the conversation because I'm like, she said that. And then I have to just throw it away real quick so I can stay focused on the rest of what she says. I am much more in control of myself than you might think. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just bringing it up because it's appropriate for this conversation that, oh, you know what? I, I need to tell her I don't like that. <laughs> so how about... Yeah, you've probably thought of this, but have you tried? No, just say, you know what? Here's a good idea. Just say that. And I'll go, you're right. And I did that. Or all right, I haven't done that. It's just that simple. It doesn't need any sugar coating. Just say, have you have you done this? Did you think about this? 
Are you going to do this? This works good for me. It, it doesn't need a prelude. Well, I mean, but familiar, being familiar with someone and how they communicate is a big factor in that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because I wouldn't ask you, hey, have you tried? I, I wouldn't do that because I don't know. And so I would probably just be very direct and say, you know, what would really might work out really good for you is blah, 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 blah. Okay. I probably wouldn't phrase it, you know, have you tried this? I have used with you, have you considered, you know, just because I want to know and then right. I'll wait for the answer. Well, see, I had to learn to not say you should. I was, oh, I was, oh, I was bad, 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 bad. Well, you know what? This is what's going on and you should do this. Mm. And, you know, someone could say that to me. And I'm like, no, I, don't, I, I shouldn't do that. Or, you know, and, I, I, and I just go on with the conversation. But it really triggers a lot of people to say you should. And I had to learn to just eliminate that for my vocabulary. It's all about personal preferences and stuff like that and yeah. being able to, but you know, going back to when we're doing our readings, sometimes we shock people so much, their face goes totally dead because yeah. they, they don't know how to react. And that's, you know what I do? I'm like, are you listening? Are we still communicating or do we need to back this up? Because yeah. if I can't read them, I, I'll just ask going, did, did I get out of line? Are we still tracking? You know, yeah. I'll just ask. You know, I, I, my, my, my favorite thing is, is uh, do you understand that or do you know I need to clarify? Yeah, that's a great question. This or does I might do does that make sense? Does that mm -hmm. make sense to you? Mm -hmm. you know? So but I always follow up I because I want to be responsible for my communication. Mm. I'm sorry, Luann, I apologize. It's okay. Um, that you know, is like do, or do I need to? You know, and so therefore it kind of takes it takes the burden off of them to try to convey what they need. It's like, yes, please explain this, 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 or this. And it's especially comes into it comes into like play with palmistry, you know, because we're looking at their palm. We're looking at, you know, what what is going on here. Um, they carry that around with them all the time. So it's not like necessarily a card where they can pick that up and go, what does this mean? You know, and because you have a picture on it, whatever. So I mean, I I just try to be very, very, you know, uh, communicative and, and say do you understand that or do i need to explain right right what were you gonna say baby doll uh, because you sometimes i say to them um it seems to me that this is a family problem or it mm. seems to me that you know <laughs> this is something else and they look at me and i said you don't have to tell me what it is right mm -hmm. because that's I'm still going to tell you what I'm seeing, hearing, feeling. They always want to tell you, though. Even yeah, when you say sometimes. that, they still want to tell you, you know. But here's what I do um, with the cards, and I do it with the lips, and I do it with the handwriting. I will, as I'm doing the reading, and I'm telling them something, I said, now, here's why I'm saying this. And I will, like, point to the lips and say, this is what's in your lips right here, and that's what that means. Or if I'm doing the handwriting, uh, I'll say, this is why I'm saying this because you see how that's looped and you see how that's how big that is or how little that is. And I don't know, maybe that's what adds validity to some of this stuff. I don't know, but I just found that people would ask questions going, how did you know that? And so I just address it as I'm going through the reading and I explain why I'm saying that. And, you know, and not that I give every detail and all this other stuff, but I just give some, you know, major points so that they can see I'm not just sitting there making crap up. Does that make sense? Yes. You know. Yeah. The last I time I did lip prints, they were like, how did you get into this? Mm -hmm. When I told them, you know, there's a whole science behind it. Yeah, absolutely. So. Well, it's really funny because, um, okay, I'll go here. So, you know, before we started Miles of Smiles, I worked for another company and I did it for eight years and they offered the lip print readings as well. And the person that owned the company spent a whole 10 minutes saying, you know, you look at the lips and then you tell them how they decorate their house and you tell them about their sex life. And, and so she looked at my lips and she gave me a reading and I had no idea what she was doing and why she was saying what she said. Okay. And Matthew, are you frozen up? No, I'm still here. God, you're I'm, so I, still. I, I, I I had like five five emails come through, like or, or five uh, text messages come through, um, just 
happens to be from the person that I was talked about previous in the conversation about. That's hilarious. I, I want to change. So, but go ahead. I apologize. Well, I, it scared I, me. You were so still. I was like freaking out. I like you having an aneurysm. Actually, or something. what he was doing was going, what now? I yeah, know. I'm like, <laughs> but anyway, I bought a book off of Amazon mm -hmm. called Lipsology. And this person actually trained people in this modality and it cost a lot of money, but I bought the book and just kind of trained myself. And so everyone that works for Miles of Smiles has been trained through this book. And I, in no form or fashion, tell people we are Lipsology experts because we are not. We are lip print readers and we read the lips and we also read them intuitively. And that's what I tell people. And if they want true lipsology, I refer them over to another person who is an expert in that. And she owns the rights to that modality now mm -hmm. because she was the head trainer. And I think the person that did that um, has passed away. So we do something similar, but it's not the same. Yeah. You know? I just, and, uh, yeah. And I, I just think it's really important is, is part of being authentic and what we do and how we do it. And I tell everybody that everyone that does something, they have a basis in that modality, but they're also intuitive and they also get spiritual messages and stuff. Like, Cause I tell everybody, I don't read cards. I don't, I use the cards as a focal point. I use them as a foundation to build off of, but 90% of what comes out of my mouth has nothing to do with those cards on that table. Now, the only thing I do really extensively and I am an expert in it is in the handwriting therapy so I'm a handwriting analysis but even then I still put the intuitive with that as well I had a point I was going to make with this and I I got thrown off it's all sounding great so keep going <laughs> it does sound great well I just think we're all really good at what we do and it's hard to explain to people what we do and how we do it mm. so the fact that we get reassurance and all of us do I mean um I mean, the first night that you went out for Miles of Smiles, Matthew, I remember talking to you for an hour on the drive home because we both got off at about the same time and yeah. we were having to drive to BFE. And um, I mean, the people were just out of their minds crazy over you, you know, and you got a huge tip that says it all in my mind. You know, it really does. And Luann always gets rave reviews and most of the clients that we have right now, even though we're a new company or repeat company uh, clients and referrals. So um, again, it just ties back in. Why are we so revered by people that don't know us? By people who don't know us personally. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I, don't so, know. I mean, it's yeah, part I, of that. I, Go ahead, Lou. part of that an interaction because children don't want you telling them what to do or, you know, aunts and uncles think they're the ones who are older than you, so why should they listen to you or? I don't know. I, I'm going to tell you the, 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 the best satisfaction I have had in an ongoing relationship other than the one I have with my husband is my daughter calls me now and she goes you know what you 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 really did this wrong raising me I, she was a very difficult child and I made a lot of mistakes with her I was following the experts you know but and I what I didn't know what to do I would get their advice and stuff and some of it was good and some was bad but we had a very difficult growing up period both of us did with her you know she had hers and I had mine and we see some things very differently in those experiences. But she calls me now more and more often because she's in her early 30s now. And she goes, you weren't wrong about that. You weren't wrong about that. You weren't wrong about that. So, I mean, it took 15 years to get there. But it's nice to hear that maybe I didn't just screw her up completely. You know? <laughs> and that if, and even if I did do a lot of things wrong, she's at a place where she can give me grace over all of that, mm -hmm. you know? So it's that, well, that, time. that speaks that speaks to to how you parented that she's able to do that now. OK, because I can I, I can tell you that there are there are kids out there that don't have that perspective. You know, they, they don't even think about it like later on in life, you know. So, I mean, to have someone, you know, that, that can call you up and say, hey, you, you were right about that. 
<clears throat> really like be conscious enough to you know have that discussion that's amazing well Speaks you know what I, I think the two major lessons that both of my kids really can appreciate is number one is I told them that no matter how they perceive their childhood it is less than a quarter of their life and they cannot let that affect the, the other 75 percent that's foolish mm -hmm. And also that when they turn 20, they're now responsible for their own happiness. Okay. And the other thing is, is I told them is that regardless of why they did something, because, you know, both my children were diagnosed with mental health issues. And I said, so like, let's say that you're having a manic episode and you get in the car and you drive and you run over someone and kill them. The legal system might say, well, it's manslaughter versus murder by m motor vehicle, you know, depending on the circumstances. But the bottom line, that person's dead. Dead is dead. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be held accountable for your for your consequences, you know, and whether you go to jail or not for that, you're going to have to live with that the rest of your life. So you have to take responsibility for not just your choices, but the result of your choices. And those are two different things. And both my kids really got those lessons pretty much early on. So, you know, I was not, yeah, and I was not a lovey dovey mother. I was not a hugger. Hugging's hard for me. And I think my kids resent that still, but it, it is what it is, you know. So, they still should listen to me. Well, I'm definitely a realist. And being a single parent, I didn't want my kids left in the lurch like I was at 20 years old and didn't know really how to do the laundry or mow the lawn or buy groceries or I didn't know any of that. I mean, you learned really quick. Oh, yeah. You learn quick. Yeah. 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 What I do you think to... makes some people huggers and some people not? I, th that fascinates me. Do you think it's an I outside think... experience that they that they embrace, or is that just part of who you are? You're born that way. I I I I think it was because that's the way I was raised. You know, we were. Are you a hugger? You're a hugger. I know you are, Louie. Huh? I'm a hugger. I hug. I, I it's hard for me to hug. I, I won't say that I won't hug and and that I hate it, but I. I don't get rejuvenated from hugs. You know, everybody go, oh, give, let me give you a hug. No, don't. Yeah, no, that's not working for <laughs> No, and it, it just doesn't do anything for me. And Scott's a hugger. And my children are huggers. And I had to learn to hug, you know, to, for their sake. And it was hard. Because I'm like, I'm sending you a hug, but stay over there. <laughs> I had a client want to hug me. Really? At I have the, that happen too. It drives me nuts. <laughs> same guy Was that he... keeps texting you or emailing you. Oh, yeah. I answered his email. I asked him if he yeah. had a place that we could go. And, and when I'm doing when I'm doing readings or or whatever else like that, I, I get that a lot. I mean, I do. I get that a lot. Can I can I give you a hug? You know? Yeah. And I, I don't mind. You know, I, I don't mind giving you a hug, but, you know, sometimes it annoys me. I'm just going to be very honest, um, you know, with my foot the way it is, getting up from behind a table to give you a hug is not always that easy. <laughs> Why do they so. want to hug us? This is what fascinates me. They don't know us. Why do they want to hug us? I think it's appreciation, like that we oh. said something and they identified with it and they want to show their appreciation. You know, yeah, I um, think, so. I, I think it's a way of acceptance. That's, those are good ways. <laughs> so I, I, I don't know. It, I, it used to trouble me that I didn't like to hug, and I, I'm not a physical person. And then you know, I just accept that's who I am, and I tell people what to expect and what not to expect. So if I offer you a hug, it's a big fucking deal, okay? Because yeah. it means I have really stepped out of my zone to be in your zone. And I'm not saying okay. comfort zone. I've just stepped out of my zone. I'm not uncomfortable with it. It doesn't make my skin crawl. It doesn't make me freak out. It's just, I don't want to do it. Yeah. I don't want to change the tire on my car when it's flat either. But if I have to, I will, you know? In so, the group that I was in before, there were two people in that group. 
that were not, they didn't want to hug. But after I'd known them for like for a year or a year and a half or so, occasionally they would come in and say, I need to give you a hug. And I'm like, what? No, don't, no, you don't. <laughs> give me a dollar. Don't All of a sudden? A <laughs> but it was nice. It was not, because then you felt like, oh, well, I guess I've arrived if you're going to give me a hug. Now, if you want to give me a rock, oh my God, I'll be so damn excited. You know, when people, I, I when I have a lot of friends that travel, I'm, I'm not a big traveler unless it's work related. And they'll say, do you want me to bring you back a souvenir? I'm like, yeah, a rock. They're like, a rock? I'm like, yeah, just as you're walking along, if you see a rock, pick it up, put it in your pocket and bring it to me. And at one time I had a box that was, okay, so you can see where I am. I'm sitting in an office chair. I had a box that's almost up to my shoulders, the big square box that was full of rocks of, that people had brought me, small rocks, big rocks. And they, I love rocks. And that was just tickled me to death. Someone stole my box of rocks when they broke into my house. Can you imagine? Who would want to steal a box of rocks? Well, no, no that's lie. weird. Wow. That's huh. why I know someone I knew, because they knew that would hurt me. They wow. stole, because they stole very specific things in my house. They stole my wedding ring, my mother's high school ring, my dad's um, uh, turquoise, I mean, a uh, tiger's eye, uh, warrior's ring, uh, video games that belonged to my son, my fake fur coat that I really liked at the time. Now I don't have any, I, I wear fur. I don't give a shit. Back then I, I, I didn't wear fur. And um, my rocks, they took my rocks. Oh, and wow. that box was heavy. They had to use like some kind of moving device to get that out, rolling device or something. Cause it was heavy. It sat in my front closet. No lie. That it, those are specific things. Yeah. Speaking of which, the the my wedding ring that got stolen, I found it on eBay last week. It was, and the reason I'm why I know it's my ring, it, I had it custom made. It was it was a, a a a diamond band that overlapped, and I had them pull the lap, pull the the two sides of the bands apart, and, and insert a sapphire stone in the center of it. So it's wow. like it was like it's a piece of wire that just wrapped around and it overlapped, but it, on, side by side that were diamonds. And I had them pull the diamonds the lapping apart and set the the the, the sapphire stone in there. And it had cracked on the back here because I hit it really hard when I was arresting someone on his head. And <laughs> <laughs> oops, he had a very hard head. And I was going to get it repaired, and so I wasn't wearing it. And that ring showed up on eBay the other day because I was looking at sapphires. Did you fire, like, file a claim? Well, yeah, this is 30 something years ago. Okay. 30 something years ago. I'd still file a claim. Well, I collected insurance on it, but oh, there's a police no. report on it. Okay. So, but the bottom line is, is that how odd that I was looking for a sapphire because I don't own any anymore. I had refused to buy Sapphire since that ring got stolen over 30 some odd years ago. And all of a sudden I'm looking at Sapphires on eBay wow. and that ring pops up. And Scott goes, buy it if you want it. I'm like, why would I want it? It was my wedding ring from another man. Yeah. And I, you know, and it wasn't even really from him. I designed it and paid for the damn thing because he was broke at the time. So screw it. It was a beautiful ring. It was a beautiful ring. Yeah, well. I'm sure there's a lesson there, but I don't know what it is. Always have insurance on your shit. I do. I do. <laughs> Insure your <laughs> shit. God. Well, I, I got in the habit of doing that when I was had my bell bond business because I had hundreds of thousands of dollars of worth of jewelry that I was responsible for that I held as collateral. And at one time I had 10 Corvettes in storage for collateral. So yeah. if you don't carry insurance on that shit, you're screwed. You know, so it's just always been something I've done. But some of the stuff I got back because they found it in pawn shops mm. right after that. So I'm pretty sure I know who stole all that crap. We have the same DNA. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Oops. Well. Yeah. Um, God, y'all just let me go down a rabbit hole and don't even try to stop me. What the hell? What's wrong with you guys? Well, you don't stop us when we go down a rabbit hole. Well, I think y'all are interesting. Well, maybe we think that you're interesting. 
oh my god that's fun <laughs> <laughs> all right so is there a solution or something that we can do or do we need to reframe it and just accept the fact that everybody thinks that we're normal and average joes if they're related to us or they're close to us and just accept the fact that we're superstars to strangers or what I don't know. I mean, because to me, you know, if I think about that, I mean, I can't control that over there, you know? And so the only thing I can manage is this right here. Um, if you have an opinion of me, I, I can't control that, yeah. you know? Yeah. I can, you know, I, I can try to convince you. Yeah. Okay. But ultimately, that's, well, that's on true. You. That's true. I had a friend so, ask me to be her coach and I refused. I said, I can be your friend or I can be your coach, but I'm not going to coach you and be your friend because your friendship is too important to me. Right. And I think that that that's common sense, but I also think it comes from the fact that I think friends just treat us differently and have different reactions to what we say. And the friendship is important enough that I don't want to damage it. But yeah. boy, I'd like to be her coach for one month. <laughs> <laughs> you know people used to say listen what other people think of you is none of your business it's but they want to tell you sometimes boy they just want to and they'll tell anybody else that will listen yes you know yes. that cracks me up well, here's what gets honestly, me but Deborah, i like what you say though when you say you know do you want to vent or do you want advice right. i think that that really really frames mm -hmm. a conversation very very well mm -hmm. so well, if you want to vent, I just put it on speakerphone and I go through the house dust and do all kinds of crap, you know, and it's not that I'm not listening. It's just that I don't have to put any thought into it and come up with something brilliant to say in response to what you're doing. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm going to pay not better attention, but I'll be I won't have any distractions so I can bring 110 percent to the table and hopefully offer some consolation or some prizes or advice or something, you know. So. Well, one of the things that I do, okay, and this is, I'm going to put this out there for both of you, and this is open to you and be available to you. Um, I tell people that if you want me to just listen, like if you want to call me up, awesome, okay? But if you call me up and say, hey, Matt, I need for you to be the Buddha, okay? <laughs> then what that means to me, what that means to me, yeah, no, I just, well, essentially, I sit there, I don't agree. I don't disagree. I don't give commentary. And the only thing that I'm allowed to ask is, is there anything else? Yeah, that's great. That's great. That's and really once great. you, once you, once you, once you get an answer of no, there's nothing else. Then I said, it's up to you to hang up. I was like, because you might think of something else. Well, so, you know, I mean, I offer that. I mean, it's, so if people call me and hey, hey, Matt, I need for you to be the Buddha. I'm like, okay. Well, you know, I did a lot of spiritual coaching for a, a while and then I quit doing it, but I think I'm going to start doing it again because for a while people assumed that spiritual coaching through me meant that I was going to proselytize to them and try to convert them to Christianity. And that's not what I do. And I actually am working on a guidebook to help anyone be a spiritual coach because your job as a spiritual coach is to help people to connect with their higher power whatever that might be it could be a broomstick it could be whatever and you do that by asking questions and having them answer the questions for themselves it doesn't matter yeah. that you know and um i put it to the test a couple of weeks ago with a young man brilliant oh my god just friggin' brilliant and he's very spiritually gifted and so much so that sometimes he doesn't know which side of the veil he's on. You know, it it, 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 it co-mingles so much. And I've been there. I know what that's like. You think you're a little crazy when that happens. And I just asked him the questions. And I said, just think about this. Come up with some answers. Come up with your ideas. And he was basically an agnostic. He had studied every major religion out there and was very knowledgeable. I was so impressed with what he knew. And today he lets me know that he has decided to become a Christian because by answering those questions, it put him in a direction 
that was comfortable with him for him and made sense to him. Now, that was not my goal. I know as a Christian, we're supposed to have that as a goal. I don't. Sorry. My goal is to help people to understand God the way they need to understand him, whatever that looks like. That's my goal or whatever helps them, you know. So I think that we, uh, the three of us, uh, should now shut sh 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 down, <laughs> sit down and maybe put together and finesse this idea and come up with a way to certify people as specifically spiritual coaches. I don't think there's anything out there like this, really, 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 really. Every um, I've experienced a couple of things like this, but I mean, but yeah, definitely. I mean, the biggest caution that I always get from people to say this kind of thing is that even unknowingly, you can kind of like taint the questions. So it leads someone to, you know, believe something or answer a question in a certain way. Okay. That's why I mean, the three of us could be so good, though, because we all come in from such yeah. different perspectives. We're the check and balance and then another check point. Yeah. The, the, the powerhouse of three, you know, because, I mean, I'm very staunch in my beliefs. Mm -hmm. They're unshakable. They're unshakable. But I don't care if you believe them or not, yeah. because they just, I, because I'm going to tell you right now, 99.9% .9 of the people that call themselves Christian could not relate the way I do. They just can't. It's, it's too, I don't know, too weird. Well, that's the issue with spirituality today. And it, I mean, I've counseled my share of people as well, you know, Christians and non-Christians alike. And, you know, I, I think people just don't want to be put in a box, but I think they do want to have some kind of revelation. They want, you know, what, what else is there, you know? And so having a book or having questions that would, you know, kind of, help people along that journey, I think would be a great idea. Well, Luann and I were at a Texacom meeting yesterday and they were talking about the importance of having letters behind your name, you know? And um, so um, it's not about certifying people to have the letters behind their name, but it's certifying people so that they can say, I've had this type of training because you and I both and Luann to a certain degree as well, because I, is that we do counsel people that are different in their spiritual beliefs than us, yeah. you know, and Luann, I've watched her go across the screen here in the past couple of years. I mean, if you talked about Christianity, she just kind of hang up on you, you know, mm. and she did a couple of times. I'm not kidding. I'm just, I, I gotta go. I mean, she just was done. You know, she was done with the conversation and not that I was trying to convert her. It's just, wasn't of interest to her and then all of a sudden you kind of called her a catholic the other day <laughs> and she didn't reject that and i went what hey 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 i've done that before and she told me to screw myself now how come he gets to do that <laughs> well so I mean, there's an understanding behind it that there are certain i mean there are certain beliefs you know that I, that i respect you know um so luann has you know certain ideas good on her you know i well, I'll, I'll, I'll i'll stick to what i said earlier is like i can't control that over there i can only control this right here okay but my point if was is that she that way, has, but my point was is she has redefined things for herself you know and so she she tried this on and it fit but it needed some elastic in the waist and then she tried this on and well that needed a hat and so then she tried this yeah. on and so she's just been kind of getting comfortable with all of that. And I think that's what is needed on a large scale is helping people to try on these things and get comfortable in their outfit. That's very true. Okay. And I'll mention something off the broadcast that Deborah, I think you need to do the same thing. Oh my God. Well, well, just tell us now. Why can't you tell us now? Well, okay, we had a conversation, and I'm not I'm not offended by you know the conversation that we had or whatever, but you fought Luann and I tooth and nail, okay, about calling yourself a Christian mystic, and that's exactly what you are. You're a Christian mystic, but for some reason you won't go beyond. You won't go beyond telling other people that because there's a connotation that you're not seeing. 
I don't like the label because, okay, there's two reasons why. I don't like the label because I don't want people to be confused. And everyone goes, what does that mean? So then I spend five to 10 minutes explaining that. I want okay, something so that that's is your evening. annoyance and in, in, in actually that label. I'm not done. I'm not done. And it doesn't seem humble enough to me. And see, that's where I think that, that we need to kind of take a step back. Okay. Is because we have gifts. Okay. Why apologize? You are a Christian mystic. You are a person that goes beyond just Christianity and can see the magic behind it. Okay. And the thing is, if you want to do, you know, if people get, give you that question all the time, then come up with an elevator pitch. Come up with the elevator speech that you give every single time. Well, help then, me with that because I have not been able to come up with an elevator speech. I need some help with that. I, I am a Christian mystic. I own that. My concern is not owning it. Is how, <clears throat> excuse me, is how other people receive it. Because if it shuts them down, I have done God a disservice. Listen not to me. up to you. But I've done God, not them. I've done God a disservice. <laughs> does he care? I mean, yes, seriously. I think he does. I think he does okay. because he gave me the gifts for a reason. And the he gifts... gave you the gifts for a purpose. He gave the gifts to you for a reason. Okay. He has nothing to do with you using those gifts. Okay. I'm if you want to go ahead. I mean, I'm uh, Luann, go ahead. I mean, I'm I'm agreeing with you. Yeah. And one of the things <laughs> that that woman over there said to me when we were talking about names, she goes, I think we should call ourselves Christian mystics. And I said, I don't identify with that. Yeah. See, so I, I just need help in communicating properly what I want them to know. So like I came back, I am really great with this delivery. I deliver words of encouragement, empowerment, enlightenment, and they are words delivered by Deborah Rose, not from Deborah Rose, because those words don't come from me. They come through me. They actually do come from you. You talk them out. It's you speaking, okay? Through that inspiration, okay? If I took you out of the equation, that goes away. Well, no, I agree with that. I, and I feel like I'm in partnership with God. I feel like I am a partner with God. Well, I mean, how do I come down? And, and I get it. I get it. Okay. And I, I, I get what you're saying. And I understand all that. But there comes a time where you need to step out uh, from behind the, oh, I'm so humble or I want to be humble. Okay. That doesn't and sound very bold. humble. And be bold. <laughs> okay. There, I mean, we, we went through like biblical, you know, stories you know, about people that, you know, just spoke out what they agreed in, you know. Oh, yeah, or, let me tell Luann, what they, what let me tell Luann what you compared me to. He compared me to the jackass in the Bible that spoke. I, you know, what I, what I said exactly is this, okay? If it wasn't you, God would find some jackass to speak for you. Yeah, So you're take right. credit. So take credit for it. Yes, I right. need to take credit for it. I'm, I'm, I do take credit for it. I don't know how to convey this comfortably to other people to where they understand what I'm saying. Well, don't add five adjectives onto the front of what you do. Call yourself a Christian mystic and say that I give you inspiration from this point of view, period. Okay, wait a minute. Say that again. Let me write that down. Hang on a second. It's All recorded. Right, say it again. It's recorded. No, the... I, give you I give you inspiration. Yeah, I give you inspiration from a Christian mystic point of view, period. Well, see, I love that. Well, Why didn't you say that the other day? <laughs> because I was trying to just be okay. That's that's what you want. You were fighting back, and I was like, I'm not going to push this boundary. <laughs> I, really, well, I really wasn't fighting. I, I'm, I'm just, I want to make sure that... Okay, so you and you you may not understand this, but I'm gonna try to just be very blunt. I want to make sure I'm pleasing to God. You are that's what I because you are Deborah. That's it. You're trying to put a, a human thought out there that God doesn't have. God doesn't look at you and go, Oh, well, Deborah needs to do XYZ. God's like, That's Deborah. I'm pleased with her. Okay. 
I get it. I get it. Damn it. I get it. I'm being schooled by the pagan. Oh my God. <laughs> well, but but that should say something to you, though. I mean, it does. You, you might be it schooled means... schooled by a pagan, okay? But look at it from like a bigger point of view. God is satisfied with you. I mean, He doesn't have a problem with you. Oh my gosh! I, I all of a sudden I said the word fuck. You think God's going to get on you about that? He's going to be like, well, no. no. I, I no. understand her heart. I understand exactly what she's saying. In fact, I tell people I've, I've, I've been contacted about a, um, participating in a beginning ministry. And I said, here's the deal. You need to know who you're hiring and who you're bringing to the table. I say fuck a lot. Mm -hmm. And I said, I will do my best not to say it in a worship environment, but I'm not guaranteeing. It. <laughs> and if you're cool with that, then I'm fine. You know. <laughs> And I think that's fair. I think that's fair. But I also think that it's very, very fair that if you go in there and it slips, you don't apologize for it. That's mm -hmm. just who you are. No, God's, I've like, only made God's like, oh, well, there's there one. Oh, no, there no. she did it again. You know, no, no. One, one more time. You know, there are people no. that keep score. There are people that keep score. Yes, there are people that keep score. They are. Okay. All right. Well, it dawned on me too, Matthew, that uh, as I was talking to my daughter about starting a new YouTube channel, I don't have to. I already have a YouTube channel that inspires and enlightens and encourages. It's Deborah Colleen Rose. I've got hypnosis tapes on there. I've got all kinds of shit. I just need to start doing my, my daily word and adding that to a playlist. And I'm already set up. So, and I need to go in there and change the description up a little bit. So, and I love the fact that you take me to task because you know what? Very few people do. I know a lot of people want to, but they don't have the balls to say it to my face. Well, I I look at you so, as so much more. I you know my friends, I, I will give everything for them. Okay, I literally have given my shirt off on my back for someone. Okay, um, but you know I see you differently. And I, I want to make sure that you just like take and explode with the possibilities that you have, you know, you know, you're talking about your logo and we'll have a discussion about that, but because I would not put yourself and I would not use the logo that you chose because that's not you. It's my tattoo though. It's your tattoo. That's not you. Okay. If you want a Deborah Colleen Rose like thing, we can do that. You have something that you can utilize. You have a signature that is Deborah Colleen Rose. So Do you think that's all I need that. to use? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Because that's you. <laughs> okay. If you make another face, I'm going to come over there and slap all four of your cheeks. <laughs> I know where you live, darling. <laughs> I don't believe you because I've invited you over here and haven't seen you here. So I don't believe you. Keep pissing her off, Luann. Keep pissing her off. I want to. I, I want. I want to prove her wrong. <laughs> I'm gonna videotape it. I'm gonna videotape it when I slap all four her little cheeks. <laughs> nah, you're not coming over here. I know it. You know I, know. I don't socialize a lot. See, yeah. that's, that, that, that's right up in the same alley as hugging. Yeah, she's not coming. Huh? I do not feel threatened at all. I'm going well, over there tomorrow just because she said that. By God, you challenged me, and I'm up for the challenge. Yeah. No. You're gonna buy me lunch too. So there you go. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, Matthew. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. You know, the people that encourage others sometimes don't get encouraged. Mm -hmm. So when I do get encouragement, even when it sounds like I'm being taken to task, I appreciate it. Um and I will tell you this, what you said was spot on. And the reason I know that is that I have um, a thing that happens to me when I'm in alignment with the Holy Spirit. This is my belief system. And I get tingles from the tip of my fingers, but they stop at the elbow. So it's not a body tingle. They always stop at the elbow. And there's a reason for that. There's a story behind that. And I'm I'm getting that. I'm getting that confirmation for that. So I uh, thank you very much for that. Thank you very much. So, all right. Well, we just, man, we went down the badger hole this day, not the rabbit hole, the badger hole and came out the wolf hole. And now we're looking at the bear. Oh my God. So 
Any closing thoughts from y'all? I'm going to just absorb mine. Uh, you know, I don't know what we can do to inspire those who love us to that we do have knowledge and that we do do things that are uh, accepted by others and praised by others. So I, you know, I don't know. Well, I, I think the biggest thing, and I teach a class on this, um, is acknowledgement. Acknowledging ourselves is sometimes the most difficult thing that we could possibly do. Um, when we frame our lives from other people's perspectives, you know, and that's growing up and all the way through our lives, okay, it's very, it's it's not very often that we get to look at ourselves and say, you know what, I'm talented, I I, I have something to offer, you know, and so you know, I, I don't know where I was going with that, but I I just these are the times that I really, really enjoy being able to share with someone how amazing they are and then actually have them realize that they are amazing. So, you know, thank you for that. Thank you for being open. Well, I, I appreciate all of this because I was raised in an environment that, you know, I, I was a straight A student. I was an overachiever, all, all kinds of things. And I was always told not to say anything about that. Don't you're going to break your arm, patting yourself on the back type thing, you know? Right. So sometimes I do need a kick in the butt to, and, and Louiana and I talked about this last year is the fact that like in the, the spiritual community, I'm not seen as a spiritualist. And I'm like, mm. That's fascinating to me because I've been doing this since I was four, you know, but I, that part of that's my fault because I don't step out and claim it. So that's what I've been doing the past year, stepping out further and further on that type rope, you know, and claiming it more and more. So I appreciate that. But you know what? If I thought anybody would show up, we should we should we should uh, organize a retreat. I think we have a lot to offer the world. I think all of us have a lot to offer the world. My thing is, how do you get people to sign up? so i think that if you advertise it as a christian a catholic and a pagan that should be you know what i should go to i wonder if i can change the name of our show that way a christian a catholic and a pagan walk into a bar yeah walk into a bar <laughs> so can way. you can you redo the, and they got drunk and everybody was happy <laughs> Can you redo our video to reflect that as our, our as our subtitle? I love that. You know, I don't think that's important. I think that having fun is more important than than uh, you know that as a spiritual thing. I I wouldn't want to bring that in because sometimes we have topics that you know aren't necessarily spiritual. You know. Okay, but They're in my head, I'm us. gonna be saying that. I'm gonna be saying okay. that in my head. Well, I was All talking right. more 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 of the retreat idea. You know. Because I think that that would be very interesting. How do you get inspiration from a Christian, a Catholic, and a pagan? <laughs> I'm not I mean, say what I, some people not show up it. just to see them fight, you know? I know, I know. <laughs> and then when we don't fight, they'll be going, what I come for? <laughs> well, I can always make start that a good fight. I can always start a good fight if that's necessary. All right, Luann. You have a new website and a new logo and a new name and everything else. Tell people about it. Uh, Ancient Herbal Apothecary is what my products will be um, umbrellaed under now. Uh, it The website is not live yet. There's just a landing page. Landing page. And um, I my email will be Luann, L-U-A-N-N, at... at yep ancientherbalapothecary.com right too bad you couldn't get aha.com that would have been so easy yeah shorter words like that you can't really really find anymore people have kind of snagged those yeah it's like my pi website is isgu isgu and yeah. I, I i never occurred to me that that actually could be sounded out into a word until i was on the radio doing an interview one day and he goes oh so you got isgu.com i'm like what? Cool. No, I don't. <laughs> it's good. I know. So, it's weird. Lu Lu Luann, Luann, tell me like like a couple of your products that people can um can, you know, uh will be seeing in the near future. Well, the elderberry syrup is number 1. 
and it's um, great. The cold and flu salve, which is not as odorous, shall I say, as Vicks, but it still helps open up your chest and, and your sinuses. Um, uh, body butter, okay. uh, the healing cream, and I th have some uh, lip balm that I've tried to add color to, and Deborah has helped me with it on last year, year before last. I guess it's been two years, hasn't it? It's been two years because we did that for the other company. Yeah. Awesome. So. Well, so all those will be on the website, right? And I have used all of those products except for the vape, the 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 Vicks type oh, stuff. Vicks. Yeah, and they're all awesome. They're all incredible. I love them all. So because I my my goal is to make sure that the ingredients that go in are organic and non GMO, and are raised in a, in a sustainable manner, and uh, those that raise it get a fair uh, dollar amount for their work. And I have enough That's integrity true. that Luann does not have enough money to buy my integrity, so I wouldn't lie about it. Well, I'm kind of biased because I, I helped her with the website and the logo and everything, but, you know, I, I can't wait to, you know, to see her release, you know, all of her products, you know, and get them out there. I'm I'm really excited about it myself. So, you know, um, when she hits, when she, if she hits social media, it's going to be freaking amazing. It really is. I mean, I, I had people that have asked me already. It was like, well, what was this thing that you posted about the ancient herbal apothecary? And I was like, ah, oh, that's Luann. Just wait. They're going to love okay. it. And I love the They're new name. It. The I, new I name is so a, good. Yeah, I do have a Facebook page, too. There you go. And and if you need to leave information there for me, you can. And is that and she ancient has a YouTube herbal channel. apothecary as well? Ancient herbal apothecary. She has a YouTube channel. It's on it's on Miles and Smiles. <laughs> But she has classes on there about some of her herbs and stuff that we posted. Yeah. Oh, it's, excellent. It's just information. Um, I usually do medicinal and uh, medical. And is there any kind of uh, medication that you take that might interfere, you know, that the herb might interfere with? Right. So you don't want to take it. Uh, things like that. That's important. That's very important. That needs to be on your website too. Yeah, because I was just consulting with someone uh, in October and she said, well, I can't uh, eat grapefruit, so probably any citrus. And I said, no, the grapefruit has an enzyme that does not play well with your medication. Right. It's not the, it's not all citrus fruit. So no. that's she good went, information. really? <laughs> So, so I like to make sure people stay informed about the medications they're taking and what might interfere. And what's your website again? Ancient Herbal Apothecary. Dot com. Dot com. Is your memory going, Matthew? Nope. <laughs> you want to leave people, you want to leave people with what you want them to remember. All right. So tell us so. about you, Derek. I you. am Matthew Pierce. Um, you can get a hold of me at MatthewAPierce.com. Um, my uh, email address is Matthew at MatthewAPierce.com. I have a couple other businesses that you know I'm getting up and running and and, and going with. Um, you can find me, um, you know, online, Facebook. You know, uh, uh, anything you want to do, let me know. I'll uh, you know try to help you out. I mean, so I mean. From graphic design to website development, branding, I can help you out with that. I am also a spiritual counselor. Um, I have my doctorate in the metaphysical um, counseling, and um, you know, so I, I do coaching as well. So you know, you can find me online, MatthewAPierce.com. That's me. So I'm Deborah Colleen Rose. I'm a Christian mystic, and one comment here, P.S. While he was schooling me to own mine, how long did I have to school you to own the doctor title? <laughs> so it's no, a problem a, for all of us. Oh, it's yeah, a problem. Absolutely. absolutely. You know, and so I think that that's a lesson that we can bring to the table. You know, 
for everyone on really claiming your gifts. So this is Miles of Smiles Events as our, our sponsor. Um, uh, my coaching site is Deborah Colleen Rose, and you can see about handwriting therapy. And we also have a private investigation company, Investigative Solutions Group at isgu.com. So we will talk to you guys later next week. Bye now. Love y'all. Love y'all. Love your show. Like you a lot. <laughs> Ponder this a bit. <laughs> Bye.